Hello again, uh, all you beautiful lovers of life. Uh, today I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to organize your milk when you have a house cow. And that is one of the reasons uh, why I think many people uh, don't want to have a cow. The fact that you have to milk the cow often and the fact that you're going to get a lot of milk. Uh, in most cases you're going to get a lot of milk and uh, what are you going to do with it? So I found uh, organization is the key. And I want to say first that when you have a, a house cow with a calf, uh, there are different ways to, to do this, and they write about it in the books and, and tell you that you can take the calf away as soon as uh, the calf is born and just have them separately, so, so you can just any time go and milk the cow. I think it's much, much better to have the calf with the cow, and of course they're going to bond, but it's so healthy for the cow, and it's so healthy for the calf, so you, you're not going to get any better situation. Uh, and and um, the, the great advantage of having a calf with the cow is that at a certain uh, time when the calf is big enough, it, he'll be able or she'll be able to drink all the milk from the cow. So you can actually go away for a couple of days and, and be sure that they, they're going to be fine. Uh, I think our big calf that we had this summer, uh, that was the calf she had before, he drank 20 liters a day easily, uh, and <laughs> so, so they can drink a lot. So that's a great freedom that you know that this this is uh, possible. And of course, you have to you have to attend your cow uh, anyway. But but you don't have to milk every single day, and you definitely don't have to milk twice a day. So um, the calf is is eight days old now, and it's quite amazing what the the cow is making. She's making eight liters of milk a day. Uh, and I, I'm not feeding her as much as I did when she was pregnant, so uh, I think it's a little bit more than half a bale of hay. Uh, she is on the meadow, and I think she is finding a fair bit of food there too, but it's very economical, because uh, half a bale of, of hay is not very much, um, and eight litres of milk, of course, is a lot. So she's giving us eight litres of milk, and the calf, I think, is drinking maybe five or six litres, so she's making 14 litres altogether every day. And that's really good. So um, I want to give you some, some just some suggestions on how you can cope with all the milk without getting stressed, because <laughs> you don't want to be stressed about abundance. Uh, but as you know, we can get quite stressed. Um, I'll just uh, start showing you. I have this. Uh, this is our, our wood stove. I'll just show it to you. This is the wood stove. Might be a bit dark, so I'll just I'll just uh, turn the light on. You can see it. This is the wood stove, and you can see the the milking bucket is standing there, and the one of the other buckets, the collecting buckets, is standing there. And while it's standing there, of course, it's being sterilised because it's very hot. So uh, this, is, this is a great advantage, I think, when you're living a simple life and you don't have a, a, dishwa a dishwashing machine, which we don't have. So, and it's important when you when you're milking. It's very important to make sure everything is clean. And I don't want to be completely hysterical, but when you're making cheese, for instance, it's really a pity when you're standing there with a beautiful cheese and it's all gone off because some bacteria has got in. So it's actually really handy to have milk uh, in pots that can can just go onto the the stove if you if you have a stove like that, because it will just put a bit of water into the into the, the pot, just put the lid on, and it will boil and it completely sterilise it. So you're sure there's no bacteria. But if you have a dishwashing machine, of course everything will be clean. So also the rag I use to wash the cow, I just put it into a pot and I put the lid on and let it boil, and then I know it's completely clean. I can use it for the next day. Uh, so what I've done this time um, is uh, I just uh, start off saying that when you ca when you bring the milk home, I have these uh, fantastic old containers. Uh, I just uh, when I've sifted through the this sift, I've showed you that I think 
so I don't use I don't use a cloth. I just use this. I think that's fine. There might be a little bit going through, but it's 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 very fine meshed. So when it's poured into here and you put something put plate on or something, uh, I put it into a sink full of cold water, and that's the the quickest way to cool down the milk. And that's a really important thing when you want to make cheese or something. The fresh milk get it cooled very quickly because it's going to keep uh, much better, and and any bacteria that has come in will not be able to grow very well. So cool it down very quickly. So I'm planning on making a cheese tomorrow. So I've I've got five liters of milk standing in a sink in one of these. So it's it's cooling real quick, and then get it into the fridge or whatever cooling place you have. So <coughs> so that's the cooling. And now I've I've uh, I've organized this year. I've tr tried to to organize myself a bit more. And I've never tried having a cow in the winter time that makes so much milk. I've never tried it before. So it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but I've made myself a little system. I can show that to you. It's very simple, like everything else I do. Very, very simple. Whoops. And it's all in Danish, so it won't be so easy to read. But um, the thing is, every day I do something different with the milk. So on Mondays, I just have fresh milk, and I just put it, cool it and put it into the fridge, or I have a cellar. Then on Tuesdays, I make kefir. On Wednesday, Thursday, I collect milk for cheese. Friday, I'll make a cheese, either Thursday or Friday, depending on how big a cheese I want to make. Saturday, I have fresh milk again, just collect the fresh milk so I have something to drink and for coffee, tea, whatever you use. And then Sunday, I make kefir, or I make a type of yogurt where I can make uh, a special, very nice butter from. So, and uh, down here, but, but next to the, the cow, is <laughs> it's hunispan, it means dog bucket. And that's a really, really handy thing to have. And I have this stainless steel one standing here on the floor. It is full of milk, more or less. And this is all the leftovers. So it's old kefir that I, ha I was going, going too, a little bit too sour and anything I had in a pot uh, that I that was that was not fresh I just pour it into that and um, when there is the yogurt bacteria or, or actually you don't have to put any bacteria into it because there's so much bacteria lactic acid in the milk and it will go sour and this is very good for dogs and dogs can live off it uh, fresh milk is not so good for one of my dogs but the, the sour milk is perfect so, and although it goes all lumpy and cheesy, doesn't matter. Just pour, um, stir it round, and put it into their uh, into their bowl, and they can live off this. If they have a, a bone once in a while, this can be their their food, just like us. Also, you can give it to chooks, and uh, they're especially good that it's quite soured, where it's quite cheesy, because they will take out the cheesy bits. Because the whey is full of minerals, but it's, it's it has no protein. So I found that um, when it's uh, sort of lumpy like that, it's really good for the chooks. So I'm hoping maybe um, I'm, I'll see if I can can actually feed them milk when I have a lot of milk instead of giving them bought feed. So so just milk and grain. I think they could they could easily make milks make eggs eggs from. So but that's a bit of an experiment. So another thing I'd like to share with you. <coughs> oh this this is oh, I'll just just explain this uh, finish this. The thing is, making kefir every day is actually a, a quite a job, and I found that uh, I drink a lot, a lot of kefir because I live mainly on on milk, and I'm healing a lot. So I have about two liters a day, apart from fresh milk. And uh, and it's actually, if you have a lot of milk, it's really handy to make it once or twice a week. And one way I found, uh, see, I've got the kefir grains down here, and I've showed you how to make it. Uh, they're down here get a spoon, spoon them out, whoops, sorry, got my nice tripod here, um, so here are the kefir grains lying here in the milk and it's been, it's just been in the cold. A really easy way to, to make kefir when you're making a lot, I think, is to actually just let this sour on the kitchen, on the bench, kitchen bench, and uh, sift it 
take the grains out and use the actual kefir that the, the, the without the grains and pour it into the milk. I think that is a really handy, really smart way to make it because then you don't have to strain all the milk or take off the cream and strain that. So you've got this as a, a sourdough. So you're making a, a kefir sourdough. So this is the only part you have to strain. And when you've used it, you you might, I think maybe for six liters of milk, uh, maybe put that much, about one cup uh, into it. You can put more, it doesn't really matter because the kefir bacteria, all the beautiful stuff is gonna grow in the milk anyway. So this is some I made yesterday and it's probably gone, it's gone really thick. I can show that to you here. Take the spoon. How thick it is. Gorgeous stuff. And see, there's no kefir grains in this, but it is kefir. And it's been standing since yesterday, and because I wanted extra healing, I let it stand one more day. So it's two day old kefir. And then I I whip it with a with the electric uh, machine whipper and then I just drink it. And it's it's not really thick, but it's very nice to drinking pepper. Um, so here I have the stuff I made two days ago. I've whipped that. You have to whip it once in a while to make it creamy again. So this is what I'm going to have today. And it's a very simple way, I think, a really simple way to make kefir. And so you're not, it's not too labor intensive because you've got many other things you want to do. So I do this twice a week. Um, yeah, and uh, what else did I want to say? Um, that was a dog bucket. I think that was all I wanted to say. <laughs> so, um, I hope you, uh, if you're thinking of having a, a house cow, that you feel inspired because it is really uh, a wonderful way to get food from the land, straight from your land. And um, there are so many ways to farm your land. And uh, I think one of our great duties as human beings this t in this day and age is to figure out how can I live on the land in a way that's really comfortable and joyful and at the same time where I heal the land. So um, I'll do some, some videos about healing the land and how you can uh, change the way uh, you treat the land instead of just ordinary farming. Um, but having a house cow and getting all this beautiful uh, food which is I mean, just all you need is a fantastic uh, way to do it because it's not only food, you're getting all these amazing nature experiences with animals and in nature. And um, if you have berries apart from the milk, I have some strawberries, I have all, uh, you can have raspberries, strawberries, raspberries, black currants, um, have them in the freezer. Um, you can you can blend them together and make these beautiful f s berry smoothies. So I think milk and berry, milk and berries you can easily live on. Uh, it just it gives it an, an extra sort of uh, fun taste. So it's not always the same. And also a way of making coffee. Uh, I can I can just uh, tell you that this here's the milk for my my coffee. I'm going to have some some morning coffee. I love uh, the taste of coffee, but I don't I don't have a lot of coffee. So all you do is it's very simple, and it's a raw milk coffee. So all you do is um, you take one spoon, just one like that, one tablespoon of coffee, and you put it into this coffee. This one hasn't been washed, but anyway, put it into here. Pour about about that much boiling water about half a cup so very very little let it stand as, as usual and press it down and then you heat the milk to about 37 38 degrees uh, Celsius which is body heat and uh, in a glass you can make this just have one of these big coffee uh, cafe au lait the glasses and um, you just pour a tiny bit on the bottom and then you fill it up with raw, with this beautiful warm, lukewarm milk. 
and it is so tasty because the coffee, although there's very little coffee in it, it just spreads all these beautiful aromas into the into the milk, and it's so satisfying. So that's the way I drink coffee <laughs> nowadays. But anyway, I hope you could use some of this advice um, if you have a cow or a goat or whatever, and um, take care. Bye.